Today I'd like to talk to you about uh, potato and tomato late blight. Uh, late blight is the same disease that we're dealing with today that caused the Irish potato famine back in the 1840s, which uh, resulted in, in, in many, many deaths over in Europe. The disease is a fungus-like uh, pathogen that attacks both potatoes and tomatoes mostly, but anything in the same family as, as those type of plants. And today we want to talk about how to recognize the plant and what you as a backyard gardener can do um, to actually help uh, decrease the actual amount of late blight inoculum around for either your own garden, neighbor's garden, or commercial growers that may be in the area. So I want to first take and focus on a potato plant. The causative agent, which is a fungus-like uh, uh, pathogen that causes late blight uh, in tomatoes and potatoes, is what we call an obligate parasite in that it has to have living tissue to stay alive on. So it's the type of thing that doesn't just survive in the soil normally uh, to be able to infect potatoes or tomatoes uh, the, the next year after you've already had it. Now you take a potato plant like this, early in the season if you're going to get late blight, even though this, is, uh, this has got some hopper burn from, uh, from an insect damage early on, what happens is if it comes from the tuber that's been planted, what you'll see early in the season is the growth, black growth and with a little white fuzz on it coming up the stem. That growth came actually from the tuber. Now remember we talked about it has to have living tissue. So if you've got late blight in any given season, let's say this se season, it can overwinter and overwinter very well on the tubers. So that next year when these tubers are planted again back in the ground and you think hey I'm gonna have a nice potato stand, make sure you examine these. The best thing to do is plant certified seed. Try not to save seed from year to year because if you save seed from year to year that may have had late blight, if you got just a little bit of late blight growing on this tuber, again when you plant them the next year you'll have it coming up and it will come up actually up the stem and can cause lesions on the stem. Once you do that then we've got a real problem again with it starting. Let's go take a look at some symptoms in tomatoes and, and we'll talk a little bit more about, uh, about the disease. The uh, fungus-like organism that causes late blight is interesting from the standpoint of it's, it's very mobile from weather, when you've got weather conditions that are gray, overcast like we have today and wet, the fungus spore actually can move for miles in the wind. Once it lands, if the foliage is wet, the spore can actually move a little bit in that water on the surface of the plant and move to a, a location where it's going to uh, cause an infection. Uh, 60 to 80 degrees with uh, lots of moisture is the ideal conditions uh, for, for late blight and, and the spores to uh, be active. Uh, as I mentioned, what it does at first when it lands on a leaf, it, it will germinate and what it causes is kind of a water-soaked lesion. That's the first thing that you're going to be able to see on a potato or tomato plant as these spores move around. This is an early infestation. You can see how this looks very water-soaked and that's what happens with it. The lesion looks water-soaked and if you turn that lesion over you can see underneath there's a little blackish in there and you can see all this white fuzz, if you would, that is caused by this fungus-like organism and this is what produces the spores. The spores can drop down on plants underneath it. It can blow away in the wind. Later on, this actually starts to turn black in the middle and you have a, just a nice green defined outline around the edge of this plant. Now it also can attack other parts of the plant. This actually causes lesions on the stem too, as well as the water-soaked lesions that you can see all around this one it, here's a stem lesion. And this is the type of thing also that you'd see on potato. Same idea, only that's when it comes up from the tuber, this is going to be on the very base of the stem. But here in tomato plants, as the season has progressed, the spores have landed, it causes this, on, this uh, blackened area on the stem. Then what happens is this blackened area, again, becomes covered with that white fuzz and actually the spores will come from there. And finally, with tomatoes, it can attack the fruit. Once the spores attack the fruit, what happens to the fruit is it starts first off getting this brownish discoloration and then eventually the fruit actually gets sunken and again you can find rows of white uh, 
fuzz, the spores are starting to form and can be released from the fruit. So certainly at this stage, everything here needs to be destroyed.